morning, Union Memorial Church family. We are so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. And I just want to say that we truly serve a good God. Yes, we do. Satan has come at us from all sides. Our praise team is down to some of the best parts of the skeleton crew. But all we can do is just keep on going and keep on serving God. We're not going to talk about how big our problems are. We are going to talk about how big our God is. And we are just going to keep on serving him, keep on praising him, keep on worshiping him in spite of no matter what's going on. It doesn't matter because we know he's got it and his program will go on. So we're just going to open up with a familiar song that everyone knows because we are putting our trust in the Lord. So that's what we're going to tell him this morning. And if you feel like worshiping and praising with us this morning, it's all right to stand on your feet and help us to praise the Lord in this familiar old time hymn. So I will trust. everyone. Welcome back. You made it back here. You could have been anywhere else today, but you made it back here to 1141 Belt Avenue. You made it here from your home, whether if all of you who are watching us from your homes, from the she shed, the man cave, you are here today. We thank you today for coming in and worshiping in with us today. We will now have our opening prayer. Will you please bow your heads? Lord God, we thank you for another day. We thank you for life. 
We thank you for all that you have done for us. Whether you, we know you said where two or three are gathered, you are present here. Lord, bring your presence down and rain it down on us. Fill us with your love. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with everything you have for us so we can be disciples for you, Lord God. We hope that we can do everything that you have asked for us to do in your name. We pray. Amen. giving all glory and honor to God who is an everlasting God. Yes, he we is. are struggling with illnesses and cracked voices and whatever Amen. else it is that's going on. <laughs> but God is everlasting yes, and it is. doesn't matter what we think our frailties are. He's got it all in his hand.
shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait for you. Yeah. I will trust in you.
Amen. Amen, church. The Lord is our light and our salvation. And if you believe that, give God a hand praise. Give him a real big hand praise for the light is shining. Amen. Praise God. We want to, before I start, we want to just acknowledge on this Memorial Day, we salute our fallen dead, those who served in the armed forces. Let's have a word of silence, please. And put this word of silence and hope into our hearts. Lord God, we salute those whom we see no more but fought for us fought for the freedom for America and we give honor and praise to those who served diligently in the armed forces so that we might walk freely throughout our land and have the freedom of speech throughout this country. To be able to hold our heads up and honor those who have gone before us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, we, we celebrate this day because our parents, our grandparents, someone we may know close to us have served in the service and served diligently and gave up their life so that we might have this type of life that we're experiencing today. And we give honor to those folk. Not only that we just eat barbecue and and go out on the boat and on, on the lake and in the boat and do all those fun things. But uh, we want to make sure we remember those who uh, gave up their lives for us. And just want to just lift them up today. Amen. Thank you. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, those who are online this morning. We give thanks. To all of you who are here, those who are watching us online, we give thanks for you today. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice. We're going to have some church. We're going to be glad 
in it. How many of you are glad that this is the day that, yeah, I'm glad that God didn't jump over this day, amen, and didn't forget about you or me, amen, and now we're here, so we're here to, to worship. And I want to say this, uh, be mindful that, that, um, that we're in worship, we're, we're in worship, and, 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 and phones, you might have to silence your phones if you're, you know, you should silence your phones anyway. Um, I don't even wear my Apple Watch because when I talk loud, it thinks I'm asking a question, and it comes on, and, um, and so we need to be mindful of that, and anything that's not related, any activity that's not related to worship may be distracting. So we come here to worship, to hear a word, to, to apply this word to our lives, that, because we believe in the word of God. Amen? Amen? Anybody with me this morning? You believe in the word of God. Amen? Amen. And, and, and not just when you get sick or tragedy knocks on your door or down the street, but you believe in the word of God every day. Amen. And that's how I was taught. Believe in the word of God. If you're going to believe in it, believe in it. Amen. Believe in the word of God every day of our lives. Make the word work for you, but work for the word. Amen. And so we're coming to the end of this sermon series. This is the third sermon series. We're still studying on Wednesday nights at 6.30, the trellis and the vine, and we're finding out how the trellis and the vine, they work together. And so we're coming to the end. This is the last sermon series. Well, I just want to go back and just revisit the first sermon. We talked about do the right thing. Do the right thing. Amen. All of us, we know what we need to be doing. Amen. Do the right thing. Amen. We talked about the importance of having a trellis. Amen. And the trellis and the vine, they work together. They work together. The trellis is an illustration of the structure of the church. And we need structure in the church. Amen. This is not a willy-nilly church. You can just come in and do whatever you want to do or whatever. I say to God, the Lord told me to do this. And, but we have a structure. That in the United Methodist Church, we have a structure that, help, that will hold everybody accountable. Amen. I'm, on, I'm, not, I'm only hearing a few of you all. Amen. If y'all don't talk loud, I'm going to have the folk in the back to move up. Amen. I'm going to have the folk in the back to move up. Y'all better talk loud. I can't hardly see you anyway. I need to see you. Amen. But we talked about the importance of the trellis. And then we did an illustration how important it is to have Jesus. See, y'all should have been shouting amen by now. It's important to have Jesus as our foundation. Amen. Uh, Jesus on the solid rock I stand. Can somebody help me this morning? On Jesus, the solid rock, we stand. All else is what? There we go. There we go. Now the juices are flowing. Amen. And so we know it's important to have a structure, to have the trellis, amen, to hold the vine up. I don't know about you, but every now and then I need Jesus to hold me up. Amen. I need Jesus to hold me up. I mean, you know, a friend can say something and make me sound good and feel good. And my mama can say something, but I need Jesus. Every now and then something tries to creep into my life, amen, and just uh, offset what I'm doing and push me back. And I, I just call on the name Jesus. I call on the name above names. Anybody out there with me this morning? I just call on Jesus, amen, and Jesus always shows up. And so we talked about doing the right thing. And there was three lessons that we talked about. We talked about lesson one. He showed them, the disciples, if you know the story, he showed them what hospitality really looked like and being ready to do the right thing by receiving them, offering them, inviting them to come and have breakfast. That was the first lesson. The second lesson, Jesus anticipated them coming. Amen. You see, we need to be anticipating. Amen. Full of anticipation this morning that somebody's going to walk up to you. I don't know where, when and how, but somebody might walk up to you and they may need a word from the Lord. And you, the person, should be ready to give them a word of 
of hope. Amen. Am I in the right church this morning? And then the third lesson we talked about, Jesus invited them to the table. Now, after you, after you receive them and, and, and show them and then you, you do, you're doing the right thing and then you, you, uh, you guide them and you give them a word, then you want to, uh, do the right thing and invite them to the table. Invite them to the church. Amen. Invite them to fellowship, amen. Invite them to a Bible study. Yeah, there we go. Invite them to a Bible study and and to a a place where we can all just glean and lean and and help them grow strong. You see, that's the work of the trellis. We're here to hold somebody up. We're here to support. We're here to to invite and to give them a, a strong, blessed assurance. Are you all with me? And then the second week we talked about uh, uh, make the connection in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. The great commission, amen, the great commission. And Jesus is sending them out, amen. And this is the vine work, amen. And as we made a great illustration of how the vine, they're going in many different places, amen. This vine here is just going in many directions, amen, and it's ready to grow and go. It's ready to grow and go. Why? Because we're feeding it and we're giving it what it needs to grow, amen, and to go. If you don't, if you're not growing, then you should not be going. You should grow and then go. Grow in the Lord. Amen, somebody. And that's when we found out in that work. Now we're at the last sermon series of this uh, book, and we're going to be talking about perennials, perennials, perennials. Amen. Listen to the word. In Acts 1, in my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. And after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and and spoke about the kingdom of God. And one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set by his own authority. But I like it when I hear a but. But. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. You will be, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria. And to the ends of the earth. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the doing of his holy word. Amen. You will be my witnesses. Amen. You know, this is, um, this is a, 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 a seed planting time, church. This is seed planting time. I mean, I don't care where you go. You can go to... Deerbergs, you can go to Snooks, you can go to Home Depot, wherever they're selling flowers. You see folk flocking, gathering, buying seeds, flowers, plants, and they're getting busy. They're getting busy. Amen. This is seed planting time, church. How many of you prefer perennials over annuals? Show a hand. I got a few in here. Yeah, okay. Perennial over annuals. I personally like perennials. Annuals are nice. 
In fact, there are some nice looking annuals out there that you don't see in perennials. And, and there are some perennials out there that you can't get in annuals. I bet somebody's saying, what you know about this, Pastor? Well, okay, okay, okay. But that's not totally why I prefer perennials. I prefer perennials because they always come back. Somebody's helping me. Amen. They, they always come back. And, 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 and sometimes we, we may have this hard, hard winter and and hailstorms and all that kind of stuff. And we begin to wonder, is it going to come back? Will it come back? Year after year, after winter, after the rain, they come back. Hallelujah. I want to use for a subject simply after this. After this. If you can just think with me, after this. I don't know what your this may be, but just hold on. After this, uh huh, this was Jesus' final time to be with his disciples. So, so they were told to wait. You know, many of us we don't like waiting. I know that we we just don't like waiting. You see, many many of us right now we just you know fast, hurry up. Get through, sit down, let's go, put it in, take it out, let's go. We, we have microwaves and air fryers and push button cars and, and technology lets you find anything by asking Siri, Google, or Alexa. Okay, okay. Yeah, I use Siri and Google. I don't know about you. So, so here they are in, in a hostile level, what I call a hostile environment, a level 10. Meaning that it can't get any worse than this. And they're told to wait. Hmm. Somebody might know what I'm talking about when you, when you ask yourself, what now? Now what? You know how things just, has, just, just pop up on you. You've been, you've been promised something that's going to happen and you're just, you're waiting. You're just, you're waiting. You're anticipating. And then all of a sudden something else comes up and you say, what now? Now what? What can happen now? I mean, I've been through the wash. I've been through the ringer. I've been through this. I've done. I prayed. I cried. I, I've labored. I've mentored. I've been, what now? What do I need to do? Yeah, it's hard to wait in a hostile environment. It's hard to wait when everything seems like it's, it's crashing down on you. And you can't even see daylight. You can't even see the light at the end of the tunnel. But you're told to wait. Our faith tells us to wait. Why? Because our faith says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Or is it that we walk by sight and not by faith? I get confused sometimes. What is it? it we walk by faith and not by sight. Not by what we see that's going on around us. We walk by faith and not by sight. Listen, listen. The quickest way for God to get you where he wants you is for him to be able to use you where he has you. Huh. What you say, Pastor? Yeah, the quickest way for God to get you where he wants you to be, okay, is for him to be able to use you right where you are. And even if you feel like sometimes we often do feel like I'm the minority. Isaiah says, wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. 
strength to stand, strength to go on or to keep on keeping on, strength to say no matter what is going on around me, in my family, connected or disconnected, that I shall continue to believe in the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody shout after this. Hmm. You see, you all know some folk. We know some folk jumping from one church to another doesn't allow God to use you where he has planted you. Hmm. Can God use you right where you are? If you're willing to wait, God's going to show up. God's going to show out. This is a very basic, simple message. Amen. This is a very basic, simple message. Too many people are jumping ship because they think that the grass is greener on the other side. Or the church is going to let me do what I want to do down the street. But once you get down the street, the church down the street says, no, we don't do that here. You see, this is a very basic, simple message this morning. All of us, we have, if you don't know, now you know, you have an after this. Whatever that after this Maybe nudging you or pulling you or trying to uh, uh, entice you, uh, trying to persuade you. You have to say after this. Can God use you right where you are? I remember October 13th, 2010, when 33 miners, 33 miners were trapped in a mine in Chile for 69 days. The mine had collapsed on them. They were trapped. Very little food, very little water, and very little air. They only had each other to depend on, to encourage each other. See, as we sit in the church today, you, you ought to look at it and say, listen, I, 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 there is a friend indeed. I, I have you. I know I've got Jesus, but there is a friend. And, and I know there's a friend over to the left and to the right. We only have each other. We only have each other. When times get tough, it's not the tough we get going with the tough we began to, to, to fold in and to rally around each other and, get, and to support and to encourage each other. And then we can say after this. They only had each other and they had to wait. See, I think about this, this text here in Acts 1 and he tells them to Wait. This wasn't a great time to be known as a Christian because there were those who were killing Christians. There were those who were persecuting Christians. There were those who were going around with AKA and shooting down innocent folk. There were people who were killing people just because they believed in Jesus Christ. This wasn't a good time, but they were told to wait. These, to continue to spread out and grow. It started as a seed planted in dirt. The vine didn't just happen overnight. It started as a seed planted in dirt. It didn't, let me say it again, it didn't just happen overnight. Weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. Hmm. You see, whenever a seed is planted, the seed itself must die. Now, this is going to be a little deep. Go deep with me. Whenever a seed is planted, the seed itself must die 
so that after this, after dying, whatever is in the seed, watch this, whatever is in the seed, the rose of Sheridan, the lily, whatever is in the seed, the kernel falls off, it's dead, watch this, then the seed comes up through the dirt, and there's your flower. Oh, wow, y'all. Woo, that's powerful, y'all. That's, uh, okay, okay, well, somebody else said, so go back and read John 12, 24 through 26. I don't have time to do it this morning, but Jesus wasn't really talking about plants. He was talking about discipleship. The seed dying is representative of those who lose their life for Jesus' sake. There's some things that I need to die to if I'm going to be the seed of God. There's some things that need to fall off me. There's some things that need to fall off of you. If you're going to be able to push up through the dirt, the mess, the world... If you're going to be able to push up, there's some stuff that's going to fall off and the true you going to come. Oh, my God. You're going to rise to the top, baby. Stuff will fall off you. And you're going to rise. Now, for some folk, I'm not talking about this church. Oh, no, 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 not this church. But some folk, when, when they get go into the ground, the, the gossip will die. The, the, the misuse of words will die. The complaining will die. All that stuff will die. It will stay. It will do exactly what it's supposed to do. Because when you die, when the flesh dies, the inner man comes out. The inner man, the Holy Spirit comes out and pushes you to the top. Some of y'all are going to give me a call and I don't know, I'll go more into it. But this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying those who lose their life, I, I, just, I, I, I just lost something. I, I used to drink. I used to cuss. I, I don't do those things anymore. Oh, oh, okay, maybe I'm not. I don't eat chocolate cake anymore. Y'all feel good about that one? So okay. So somebody saying I, he hasn't landed on my street yet. Okay. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't. I don't drink sodas anymore. I don't. No, that stuff is not good for me. I don't. I don't. Uh, 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 I don't. I don't nibble on things that I should not be. I don't eat a lot of sugar. I don't do those things anymore. Y'all feel good now with that? I mean, y'all okay with that? All right. Whatever it is that the Lord told you, or the doctor told the Lord to tell you. Okay. If we're going to grow, I'm talking about union. If we're going to grow, we've got to be willing to die to some stuff. We got to be willing to die. Somebody ought to help that sister clap. Somebody ought to give help us clap because you know, we know that we need to die. If we're going to grow union, then we, we need to just step back and, 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 and die to some stuff so that transformation can take place. So that the seed in you, okay, somebody, the Christ in you, but after this, after your test, after your trial, after your pain, after your put down, talked about you, set you up after this. It's the after this 
that we work for, long, hold on to. Oh, there's an after this, you all. There, there is an after this. I know it because God didn't bring us this far to let us down. God didn't bring us this far to turn his back on me. God didn't bring me this far to let me down. God, Jesus, didn't do all of this just to let me simmer and sit. And he didn't do all of this to let me just sit back and twiddle my thumbs. He didn't do all of this to let me just dwindle down to nothing. There is an after this. Yes, Lord. How many of you know that there is an after this that lives in you? And you and you. Somebody shout again after this. Whatever it is after this comes out of you. That's what we're going for. What keeps this vine growing? You can't see the roots, but the vine is strong. I hope you all are getting this. What keeps, what, what, what kept these disciples together, tight and right, as young folk would say? What was it? What is it? it kept them tight and right in the midst of persecution and uncertainty. We're living in some uncertain times. Gun violence, inflation, uh, inflation, uh, formula shortage, uh, all of that. First it was COVID, now it's the monkeypox. Uncertain times, church. When you go to the grocery store, it could be your last time. Dropping kids off to school or coming to church could be your last time. So I'm curious to know these disciples, but these disciples stayed together because somehow they knew there was an after this coming for them. So what keeps you rooted and planted believing in Union Memorial? What keeps you planted and believing in the Bible studies? What keeps you planted and believing in coming to church Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday? What keeps you growing in spite of dirt, trials, and tribulation? What keeps you going? What keeps us together? Hmm. Jesus says, wait for the promise. Has anybody ever promised you something and they went back or didn't come through? You know how that feels. You know what's, what's going on with that. Jesus never made a promise that he never came through. He always makes promises that he comes through. That's how you got to be where you are today. The promise of the Lord. What kept them together? They were planted, rooted in Christ. I hear Psalm 1 talking to me this morning. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. Who are you walking with? Or stand in the way that sinners take. Who do you stand with? You got to stand for something. Because if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Or sit in the company of mockers. Who are you sitting with? Who are you talking to today? But then the psalmist says, but those who, those who delight in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night, that person is like the tree planted by streams of water. You see the connection? Planted by the streams of water. You remember last Sunday we talked about? Jesus says, out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus. The psalmist is saying here, look at the connection. A tree planted by streams of water. Planted by the source that gives him life. Who are you? talking to that's giving you life who are you sitting with that's supposed to be giving you life 
Who are you in conversation with that's supposed to be lifting up the name of Jesus? Who are you talking to? It says when the person is planted by the source, the true source, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves never, never wither. Whatever they do, they prosper. They're good at it. It is not them. It is him. Greater is he that is in me because greater than he is in the world, right? And so I'm planted by greater is he that is in me. Oh, y'all getting it? I'm planted by greater is he that is in me. Who is in me? He is in me. Jesus is in me. The Holy Spirit is in me. And, and so I'm planted by that source. And when I run low, I know where to go to the source. I don't need to go to my neighbor. I need to go to the source. The disciples were planted and they were rooted and they were growing. This is what we got to get, church. We got to get this. You got to get this. The disciples were planted. They were in one place. They were rooted in the word and they were growing. They had experienced what the Holy Spirit had done for them. But now they were waiting for what the Holy Spirit was going to do through them. That's important. Jesus says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, until the ends of the earth. Amen. As a root begin to grow, you can't contain them in one place. I can't tell you how many times my wife clipped that pant and put it somewhere else. Then all of a sudden we look at it and we see it and little roots are, are growing and developing. Listen to it again. Listen to it again. He says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem on Clara. You'll be my witnesses in Judea in Wellston. You'll be my witnesses on the north side. On the south side, you, you'll be my witnesses. And as a root begins to grow, you can't contain that root in one place. In John 12, 24, remember Jesus says, if the seed dies, if the seed dies, I'm almost finished. If the seed dies, I wonder why the writer put if there. I like to play on words because no one's going to force you to die. No one's going to uh, coerce you into dying or to letting go. No one's going to bribe you. I'll give you this if you let that go. So as I begin to study the word if, why did he put if there? Why don't he just go and say when you die? Because most folk won't die. All right, all right, most folk go hold on to what they've been holding on to years and years and years. I ain't talking about your neighbor. I'm talking about church folk. Most folk ain't going to let it go. Just like let it go and trust God and let God. But God has a plan for those folk too. You got to let it go. Even if you're wrong, you got to let it go. And even if, if, you, if you're right, you don't have to prove that you're right. Just let it go. We're not looking for trophies in the church. We're looking for people in the church. And so he says, if the seed dies, it produces many seeds. I like that part. It produces many seeds. This plant started from one seed. This plant gave birth to many plants just like this one. I remember, I remember buying a perennial. And you remember I mentioned about perennials and annuals. Well, I remember buying a perennial two years ago. And boy, that thing just broke through the ground and I'm looking at it and I'm saying, look at it. It looks so good. It looked like the first day I bought it. 
I don't care what you've been through in life. God will put the grace on you like it was the very first day. Whatever you've been through in life, you got to shake it off like that perennial. Shook off the dirt and bust through the... I mentioned perennials and annuals because I like them both, but I like perennials. Well, I believe God wants the church to be like perennials. Because we can come back week after week and month after month and year after year. We can come back. We can come back trial after trial and persecution after persecution. We can come back and we can shout after this. We're making our way back into the church. We can say after that. We come back after the storm and after the rain and the hail and, and you've, you've got the power to come back. You've got the power to push up through the dirt. After the tests, there will be a testimony. After this, there will be glory. After this, there will be life. There will be singing. There will be dancing. After all of this, after we get through all of this, don't give up on the church. Please don't give up on union because after all of what you've been through, it's time to say, it's time to bust through. It's time to come up through the dirt. It's time to come back into the church. Jesus was the seed that was planted. His disciples left him at the cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. He even went to hell and did some preaching there. And just like a master gardener picks his prize fruit out of the dirt. On the third day after this, after the crucifixion, after the humiliation, after the put down, the spit on, talked about, God raised Jesus from the dead and Jesus pushed through the dirt of being mocked. He pushed through the dirt of being beaten. He pushed through the dirt of being humiliated. He pushed through all of that with all power in his hand. I hope the church, I hope union can wait because there is an after this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Devil don't know who he's messing with. I said the devil don't even know who he's messing with. The devil don't even, he doesn't have a clue who he's messing with. He is trying to bark up Union Memorial. Guess what? And all we've got to do is say, say devil, after this, you better look out. It's your pushback. It's your pushback. After this, I, I really like this trellis and the vine study. And these leaves are not growing. My wife said, make sure you bring it home. Look at this. Look at that. I can go and I got it all hanging out. It's just full. Now there are going to be some folk in the church like this little fella here he gonna come on <laughs> and there gonna be some folk that gonna fall out they gonna they gonna see some folk like that too so I mean, but God gonna deal with it you know what I mean hmm see you gotta you gotta look at what's going on here there are gonna be some folk that's gonna fall off you're going to stop believing. See, why, why is it that this one is green and this one right next to it is yellow? Now, you better look at who you're sitting next to. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to let me preach. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to let me preach. I, I, I just looked at that. Why is it sitting so close? But one is green and you, you, one is yellow. And and, 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 and and so the yellow gone, is it going to infect the green? But it's still green. I mean, it seems like it ain't. You better watch who you're talking to. Yeah. 
Yes, Lord. I love this. I love this. Because this is the image. This is, this is Jesus, y'all. This is the foundation. And, they, and, and, and you can shake it and they still hold it on. Look at that. You can shake it. You can rattle it. Has, has anybody ever... Has ever, anybody ever been shook so hard that, that, that you know it wasn't God, that it was the devil trying to shake your faith right up out of you? Huh? Has it ever happened to anybody? Just tried to shake you away from the Lord. But look how strong they hold it. Look at that. That's strong faith right there, y'all. That's strong faith. That's amazing faith. Amen. Because I know that everybody in here, you've had some sort of a trial or a tribulation. Amen. And if you have not, just keep living. Just keep living. Just keep living. We live in an imperfect world with imperfect people. Just keep living. But when it gets so close to you. See, I know the reason why this thing is still green and one is yellow. The one is green saying, you can't influence me. You can't influence me. I'm, I'm going to, you're trying to distract me. And, and if I let you distract me, then I'm going to start turning yellow. And I'm going to fall off the vine. I'm going to break away from Jesus Christ. I'm going to break away from the foundation. But I'm just going to ignore you and I'm going to pray you away. I'm going to pray you away. I'm going to pray you in. And that's the way I'm going to stay green. I'm going to stay connected. I'm going to stay believing through all of the trials. Paul said it best. He said when he was hard pressed on every side he was hard pressed on he couldn't move to the left or the right he says I remember those days I was hard pressed on every side but it was his faith that got him through all of that pressing and then again in Philippians he says I press on see sometimes you gotta push some stuff down and get it away from you I want the church to get this I want the church to get this we, ain't, we, we, we have stopped pushing things away. We think it's going to go away by itself. It's not going to go away. Jesus says, this one you need to pray. So all we need to do is pray. See, if I could stretch my plant theological mind, I would say that this green plant has just been praying and praying. Lord, don't let them touch me. Lord, don't, Lord, don't let them change me. I want to stay connected to you, Father. I want to stay connected to the vine. Lord, please. Yeah. Yeah. We got to. Mm. We got to believe that there is an after this. My God ain't through with you yet, Union. Don't pretend like God is through with you. Don't even act like God is through with you. Don't even get it in your mind that God is through with you. Union, there's an after this for you. Hmm. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Give God a hand praise. I, we're going to start a new series off next week. And then we're going to have... We're going to have Reverend Graham to come and preach for us on the 13th of June, I believe. No, the 12th of June, the 12th of June, because that's our conference. And Reverend Graham is going to come and he's going to bring the word to us. Amen. And for us. Amen. So pack a lunchbox. Come on in. Amen. Because there's going to be some great food to be served here today and on the 13th. We are the 12th. We are going to move now into opening up the doors of the church. You know, it's one of those traditional moments that we say we open up the doors of the church and people, they feel a nudge or they feel a call to uh, unite to become disciples of that church and so this is, this is the time I'm going to say the Lord's heart is open for you. And whatever it is that you may be struggling with, whatever it is, if you don't even believe that there is an after this for you, 
that I'm speaking to you this morning. There may be somebody online that's looking to unite and to, to push through some problems and you haven't been very successful doing that. I'm going to invite you to, to partner with Union Memorial and to, to grow with us, we're growing and loving and learning. This is the church that we do all of that. The heart of his, of our Savior, the heart of his love is open for you. There may be somebody today that just, I just, I, I just, I fell off. I belong to the church, but I, I fell off. I just, I need to tighten it up a little bit. I've been going in the wrong directions. I've been listening to the wrong people. I've been sitting in the seat of those who mock the church, the pastor, the Lord, and even my friends. Now I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. See, we want to get all that stuff out of there because I really want to know what is my after this? What is it, God? I don't want to be hanging right here in this place, in this place and time. I want to know. I want to move on. So whatever it is that you need to correct me on, do it, God. Do it. 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 Do it, Lord. Clean my mouth. Clean my mind. Clean my soul. Clean my spirit. Whatever it is, God, make me a Christian, God. Make me a true Christian God not just one on the outside but one on the inside God then I'm speaking to you I'm speaking to you the heart of Christ is open let me pray this prayer gracious almighty God we thank you Lord for what our ears have heard and our spirits have received Father we thank you for the after this we know that there is an after this for all of us it was an after this for Jesus and he broke through and he rose on the third day God and he had all power in his hands and we thank you father for the breakthrough because some of us are breaking through God we're tired of being broke down and we're getting ready to break out so we can experience the breakthrough God so come now Holy Spirit and we invite every person that have ears to hear God into your heart right now into your heart and all these things we pray and we ask in the master's name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. We're going to have uh, Robin, the lay leader, Robin Browning to come and give us some informa information and some announcements. And um, after that, we will, we will dismiss. Listen, I want everybody, I want to say it now, make, make sure everybody have a blessed, safe Memorial Day. Amen. Amen. Look out for other folks on the on the highways and byways while you're driving. Yes. It's called defensive driving. Yes. Be be very aware of that. Come on, Robin. Yes. That was a word. And ooh, with that word, I hope we are the same thing strong enough to in our giving today. We have a couple of ways to give. You can, um, if you are here and you have offering or tithes on your way out, please put that in the basket um, that our ushers will have for you. So please do that. If you are watching us from online or if you're even here too and would rather give online, go to unionmemorialstl.org. Hit the giving button on the top right and follow the prompts. Make sure you go all the way to the end and it says that your giving has been accepted. And also, if you would like, if you are like to come during the week, you can drop off your offering and slide it in the mailbox and it will be received. So with that, let's have our prayer on our offering. God, we are grateful. You are our strength. You are our song and you are our joy. We offer our gifts to you with joy and gladness. All we have belongs to you and we are glad to share them with you. Bless today's offerings and tithes. Let your majesty be our light and your son's compassion be our inspiration. The spirit is our power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements. Just to follow up on Memorial Day, 
And you know how I am about my Black History moments. You know, Memorial Day was uh, um, done by former slaves in Charleston, South Carolina. And they did a series of memorials for Union soldiers who were um, buried in like a mass grave and um, died there. So they went ahead and did more and did dug graves and did memorials for them to be honored individually. So you tell somebody, we did that. Memorial Day was, was started by black folk and honored black folk. Okay, so with that, we also, um, you know, with this uh, sermon today, um, we've all been going through a lot this past Sundays that's going on in this world. And a lot of people are upset and angry. Um, And, a, and I was just disheartened that that we're going in the way of, I don't want your thoughts and prayers. I don't want your thoughts and prayers. And for me, I was sort of, as a Christian woman, I was sort of like, mm, no. I do want your thoughts and prayers. I want your thoughts and prayers because that shows God's love through his word. But then I want... I want you and all of us to then take our action and show God's love. And I want action from our legislatures. That's God's love in action. So please continue with your thoughts and prayers because that is God's love, giving that to someone because we wouldn't wish that on anyone to happen to them. So. Those are my things. Other, otherwise, we do have our January, I mean January, oh goodness, June <laughs> announcements coming up. But before we close out this month of May, do we have any May birthdays? Birthday babies in the back. Hey, Miss Williams, happy birthday. Give her a hand. <laughs> happy birthday, hope it had, did it already occur? Okay, I'm glad it was blessed and you are here. Thank the Lord for one more year. Thank you. All right. We will have, um, again, the pastor has said that our annual conference will be June 10th, 11th, and 12th. So he will not and I will not be here on those dates. Please be in prayer for us as we go down to Springfield for those dates. We also heard, like I said, we heard that word, right? That word was powerful that he gave. But in order for us to really know it and feel that word, we got to get together. And we got to get together through his word in that Bible study. That trellis and vine Bible study digs even deeper. So please attend the trellis and the vine uh, worship or Bible study that's 6.30 through 7.30 on Wednesday night it's also with green trails and there's nothing like getting together and studying the word you are not alone with that if you don't understand it is okay because there is someone there to lift you up to help you understand so don't don't be scared to go into Bible studies don't be scared to go to Sunday school you know, we're all there to lift each other up. The Bible can't be closed during the week. So whether you're doing it here or through another uh, study, please can continue to do that and stay close to God through his word. We will have, again, please get this out, Juneteenth celebration slash our Summer Breeze concert. That's going to be on June 18th on Saturday, 3 to 5. It may go a little bit longer if we're feeling it. So please invite someone, bring your chair, 
bring just the energy to uh, hear good music and it'll be good, good fellowship. So please come out and uh, for that and invite somebody else. And speaking of inviting anyone, is anyone here? We have any first time guests? It doesn't seem like it. So we gotta go ahead and ask again. I know I asked somebody, didn't come, that's okay. I'm gonna keep asking. So we gotta keep asking, all right? So keep inviting, keep inviting. They'll come, they'll eventually come. <laughs> so also too, if you have anything, um, we say the connections table is for uh, guests. Our, con our connection tables for all of us that's out in the North X. If you are um, unsure about a ministry or you would like to join a ministry, you can go to the connections table and learn more about that or um, have a question answered about that. So please, if there's anything going on within the church that you want to know and, um, and you're still a member here, you can go to so you can be added to that list and with that just remember before you go our mission here at Union Memorial we are transforming lives and we are making disciples for Christ our vision here is we are connecting people to God through our great compelling worship through our compassionate outreach and our genuine faith development you all are gonna enact that. And so somebody's gonna get here and come here and they're gonna see it. So please be in mind of that. And with that, we will now have, have our benediction. Please stand. So, yeah, I wanna also make known congratulations to Dr. Rosalind Kelly Sykes. Rosalind will be awarded the NAACP Volunteer Leadership Award at the June, yeah, let's put our hands together. Yeah, and uh, this will be for uh, June 13th, NAACP uh, Freedom Fund Dinner for Outstanding Church and Community Leadership. Again, let's put our hands together for Rosalind because she does great work, doing great work. And uh, the award dinner will be held at the Marriott Hotel downtown on 8th and Washington. And uh, the evening will begin with a 5.30 p.m. reception. And the tickets are, this is a fundraiser now, fundraiser, so a fundraiser. Uh, don't jump out of your skin. The tickets are 150 per person or a table of 10. And if you have any concerns or any interest in this, please contact Ms. Jean Neal. Uh, and she will get you suited, booted, hooked up to that event. But if you cannot make the dinner, listen, I believe in giving folk their flowers while they are alive. Amen, somebody. Let the church say amen. Amen. And so if you have a congratulations uh, on your heart, a note of thanks, keep up the good work. She's right there. Please do not leave without saying something to her or next week. OK, so we want to make sure that we recognize all of our leaders, all of you. Uh, when you are given an award, we want to recognize you for the work that Christ planted in you to do for the community and for the church. Amen. Also, we want to remember the information. I don't have it in front of me, but. Bill Doggett, Dr. Doggett's son, who will be coming in. He's the keynote speaker. Uh, he will be speaking um, and lifting up the work that Dr. Doggett did back in his day. And uh, that's coming up real soon, and I'll have that information. I did have it last week. I'll have it again next week for those who may be interested in going and attending that. Dr. Doggett was the pastor of this church. You all know that, and we should support and do what we can do. That event is free, and uh, just showing up and showing his son how much we loved his, his dad and, and the work that still lives in this church. Amen? 
Amen. Uh, I'm going to say this. This is the last thing. I have a one-on-one with me um, from 11 to 3, Saturday, May 28th, June 4th, and then June 25th. I'm going to pass this to somebody, and they could give it to Aaron. He's in the back already. And we want to get some sign up. What is this about? This is about me just sitting down, having a conversation with you that I could not have when I first got here two, going on two years ago. It's just very important that we just sit and talk. And let me ask you, what do you like about your church? What do you hope to see change? How, where do you see your church five years from now? These are just general basic questions that I, that I would like to have conversations with you. If you tell me what your favorite drink is, I'll have it here for you. Um, I usually call it cocoa, cookies, and punch. I don't drink coffee, but whatever. Um, but I would like to have a conversation with you. So if you would schedule on your way out, and then the Jazz Fest. We really need to see who actually will be there that, e that evening, uh, because we have a food truck that's coming out. And we want to be good stewards. We're telling this person a certain amount of people should be here. We're looking for 65 folk. We had a great time last year. Did we not? We had a great time. And this time is going to be even greater than the last time because Charlotte has recruited some folk. Amen. And then the praise team are going to be singing. Amen. And so I'm, it's a great lineup for all of you. So I, I would ask that you support. See, this is how we... It's how we come back. This is how we push back. We have events. Everybody show up. You know, you don't have to stay the length of the, the jazz fest. Just show up. Buy, have something to eat or whatever. Mingle, talk. Let's show the community. Let's make the community turn their heads and say, what's going on up there? What's going on in that schoolyard? What's going on? Okay, let me share this with you. This might uh, give an amen. So the Missouri Conference... Um, put together uh, a grant for the historic black churches and I got the letter I was away at licensing school teaching this past Thursday Friday Saturday Tuesday Thursday Friday Saturday um, and I got the letter and they're offering and they have different categories we could choose many categories we can choose it's whatever we want to use it for it's $25,000 So that might be a, okay, I'll get that time to rest for a little bit. So, hey, y'all, anytime somebody want to give you money. <laughs> I even got the drummer clapping, yeah. You know, anytime somebody want to give you some money, so, you know, they're giving to all the historic black churches. We are one of the historic black churches. And so we we'll put, put the grant together and, and pop it off. And then guess what? We'll just sit back and wait for the funds to come in, okay? So that's, that's, a, that's a gift. See, after this, see, after all of what we've been praying for and, and hoping for, then all of a sudden we get a letter saying, hey, we want to give the church some money. And so, man, you know, praise God. Listen, be blessed, be safe. Know your surroundings when you're celebrating this year. Keep an eye out on your neighbor's home because your neighbors should be watching your home and stay in God's grace. Every head bow, every eye close. Gracious, most loving, eternal God, we thank you, Father, for the persecutions because pers persecutions make us better than what we are. We thank you, Father, for the trial. Because the trial makes us better. And so we thank you, Father, for giving us the spirit of patience as we wait for the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. Come now, Holy Spirit, Holy Power, rest upon these, your people. Watch over them on this Labor Day, God. Let them have a wonderful time with their families and friends. We bless those who are, are traveling, God. Give them traveling mercies to and fro. And then, God, we just give thanks to you for the after this. 
We don't know what that is or what it means, God, but we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You would never walk away from us. And so we look for the after this. Now, by the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the sweet communion with the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide now and forever. And if you're a believer, all God's children said amen. amen. Say amen one more time. Amen. amen. Give God a hand praise as we go out. Touch somebody and tell them you love them and there's nothing that you can do about it.